Hey everybody, this is Dr. Flight, and uh, this is a video that focuses on um, the first couple steps of segmenting, targeting, and positioning, and specifically we'll kind of think about this idea of segmenting um, in this in this video. This will be this part, um, but it's good to think about the whole process <clears throat> in strategic marketing as uh, a three-step element where we're choosing um, a group of consumers that best matches our skill sets and those whom we think are the best customers for us to try to reach and then uh, position ourselves towards them. So when we say segmenting, targeting, and positioning, it's really three separate activities all focused towards the same, same goal in mind. So when we segment, um, and we'll talk about each of these in a lot of detail, but when we segment, we identify um, groups of consumers who behave or act in a similar way or have something in common with each other. And typically that thing in common is the need or the want that they want to um, satisfy. And um, there may be some other characteristics involved too with, uh, with that, which we'll talk about again in depth. Targeting is the act of evaluating market segments. So once we have said or decided on uh, these groups of consumers that we could possibly try to reach, our next step is to um, you know, evaluate and consider which ones are the best for us to try to reach, the most profitable and the ones who we think we can satisfy the most. So choosing them um, is that kind of targeting thing. Last step is uh, positioning. And so using the four Ps, creating a marketing mix plan, we bring our products or service to the market, to the segment of the market that we want to uh, try to reach. That's positioning. And again, we'll talk about all these quite a bit in detail. There's actually a process, a five-step process. And so um, in, this, in this video, we'll look at the first two. And then in other videos, we'll look at the other, other steps. Um, so first step is establishing objectives, like what we want to accomplish as a result of this strategy that we're going to uh, design. Um, and then also we're going to look at number two, identifying segmentation methods or criteria. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And we'll just jump right into this step one, establishing overall strategies or objectives. And so, you know, at the end of the day, um, as, as you know, one of our goals here is to grow um, and uh, identify ways to build a business model um, that will be sustainable, that will take advantage of our core competencies, um, and be something that creates value in the marketplace. So um, the strategy that we choose to engage in um, needs to meet those types of goals and objectives. So one objective then, and these are three that you'll see that are um, common or popular, um, uh, but these are things we want to accomplish, expanding the product into new markets that we currently don't serve. And so if you remember, that would be, um, if you remember the ANSOF uh, growth matrix, um, that strategy would be a market development strategy, right? So that's something that we want to evaluate markets to know which ones to go into to fulfill that goal of a market development strategy might want to increase market share by directly competing with other firms. Um, this is a great objective if you want to gain market share, if you want to be more competitive, if you want to be the dominant brand or service or product in, in, a, in a market space. Knowing what your com competition does and knowing your market that you serve are exceedingly important. Um, this would be probably fall in line with the market penetration strategy that ANSOF has. And you might recall that as well. Another objective may include this idea of creating a brand and developing the image of the brand. This is particularly done when we position a product. So some brands you know are like luxury brands, some are value brands, some are uh, known for certain personalities or characteristics. 
all of those images that we have of brands are developed and nurtured and created through how we communicate um, information about our brand, where we position our brand, where we where we distribute our brand, um, uh, the colors that we use, the packaging that's used, the pricing strategy we use. You know, all of those things we do in marketing serve to create an image for the brand. Um, and that is, again, it's kind of this last step called positioning. But we want to do that. Something that's an objective of ours is to position and create an image for our brand. And so that's something that we may want to do here, too. So before we start, then, think about what you want to accomplish, in other words. What, what do you want to um, have happen um, as a result of us doing this activity? Okay, so that helps guide us a little bit. And moving forward, we're going to jump right into step number two. And this is this idea of um, employing or using things we call segmentation criteria. Okay, um, there's, uh, it mentions segmentation methods here, and there's five of them. Sometimes you won't always see five. Sometimes there are four. Um, but but um, there's probably, you could probably even create more if you wanted to. But these are the big ones. These are the ones that uh, marketers use a lot to segment or split up a market. So let's say you have a big mass market with lots and lots of consumers and your goal is to you know, kind of find groups of consumers that might gravitate towards your product or might, you might sell to specifically. So how are you going to group them? How are you going to split them up? What criteria would you use? You might use geography, where your customers are located. Demographics include physical characteristics about your consumers. Psychographics include mental characteristics about your consumers. The benefit specifically uh, deals with the motive or the purpose your customer is using your product. So the need or the want that's being satisfied by the customer. That's a way we could segment the market. Um, and we'll, again, we'll talk about all these quite a bit in detail. So, um, and then finally, behavior. Um, the behavioral aspects, um, like uh, how the consumer uses your product or how they uh, buy your product, um, you know those type those types of things. We'll talk talk about those too. So we could again, all we're doing here is we're thinking about how we can regroup consumers by things they have in common with each other, and so we can identify them and we can reach them with our messaging. Um, and so we're just asking at this stage, what criteria should we use to do that? And so there's literally hundreds of different ways we can do this within these five um, kind of big groups here or big concepts. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about each one. When we do geographic segmentation, we can, we can regroup or we can identify our consumers by things like political boundaries. Now, when I say political boundaries, I mean like um, uh, like, like uh, states, uh, counties, cities, countries. You know, when we think about a boundary of you know people who uh, either live and work in a specific county, that might be designated from people who work and live in a different county. Okay, so that's how we think about that. There are other things we could do, and, and trust me, um, zip codes, for instance, are used a lot, um, and like place of residence or where people work, you know, like their address is, is, is used a lot because it's easy to easy to capture. There are other geographic characteristics, though, too. Think about characteristics that might be. Um, uh, topographical uh, in nature or uh, by weather, or geographical by nature in the sense of uh, atmospheric, I guess. Weather, uh, whether it's hot, hot regions versus cold regions, snowy regions versus sunnier regions, rainier regions versus uh, sunnier regions, um, desert areas versus mountain areas, you know, those types of things, terrain, um, coastal areas versus plains. You know, we could segment groups of consumers by those geographical features as well. Um, 
another another way we can do this is by geographic by by uh, segmenting geographically by population and population density. This is another popular thing that we do. Say um, we look at population density and um, the more crowded a space is, um, it tends to be more city-like, like a city. The less populated or less densely populated a space is, it's more rural. And so population density might be an indication of uh, like whether it's a city life, a suburban life, a rural life, or something in between. Okay, so um, so think about like where your customers are, you know are grouped by when you think about location, and if you do that, that's a geographic segmentation process. Right? Demographic segmentation. Okay, demographic segmentations are by far the most popular along with geographic, um, in terms of ease. So it's easy to collect data, and it's easy to identify and locate customers by their location and by their demographics. And when we talk about demographics, what we're talking about are uh, variables or criteria um, that describe the customers, and typically their physical conditions. Um, so when we pull up what these are they include and there's going to be lots and lots of these this list is not complete but this list is the most popular things like their age how old they are their gender um, gender identity income levels education levels how many children they have if any the household size that they live in in other words how many people live in the household that they live in as well marital status that's another thing. Um, so again, the list could be very, very long, um, but these are generally reflective characteristics um, that tell us what the consumers kind of look like and you know their characteristics. Largely, they have little control over. Um, again, they're really good variables to describe a group of consumers, and you might be able to identify, um, you know, patterns among them. A, a air of caution here: um, some people and some marketers would use them with the assumption that these cause or motivate behavior, but they don't. Because somebody is a certain age doesn't make them do something. Because somebody is a certain gender doesn't make them do something. Because somebody has a certain education level doesn't make them or motivate them to do something. It happens to be that people do things, people buy products, and they match certain characteristics or certain characteristics are similar among them maybe. Um, so certainly this is popular. A lot of marketers will use these criteria, but this is weak data. This is not real strong data that explains a lot of behavior, but reflects those who do behave. Okay, so just keep that in mind as we move forward. The third group here is by far the hardest to measure, admittedly, but it gives us the most information and it's called psychographic segmentation. Um, sometimes people will call this psychometric, but psychographic segmentation deals with how people think, how people think. This is much closer to explaining, these variables are much closer to explaining why people behave a certain way because it happens inside. Um, so your attitude, your personality, your view of your self-image, um, those are all internal traits. Your level of awareness, knowledge, um, what you aspire to do, your lifestyle, um, your belief system, your wants, your needs, those types of things all happen inside. They're hard to measure, right? I can't just look at a person and like identify them by their self-image by looking at them. I have to measure that. So I have to do some surveying or I have to do some data collection. It's a little bit more challenging. But think about like what drives somebody or what motivates somebody to behave or do an action. It's these things, right? These are the things that cause behavior. Um, so that's why these are really important to really capture, even though they're hard to capture. And, and this is 
markedly different than the demographic segmentation criteria. Remember, demographic criteria tend not to explain behavior. Psychographic segmentation criteria do. Um, so that's why from a marketer's, like a science perspective, they're important. Okay, a couple more here. Um, segmentation by benefit. Okay, dividing the market then um, into groups of consumers specifically by their wants and needs is a powerful way to um, then create a product and a service. And this may not seem obvious at first, but here's, a, here's just a real quick illustration. Um, let's say you're going to go to the movies, um, you love the movies, you want to watch a movie. Well, think about why people go to the movies. And um, I'm just going to give you two motivations here. One, it might be they simply want to be entertained. They enjoy a story. They want to be amused by a plot. They like the idea of, um, you know, for an hour or two, um, being somewhere else, listening to, you know, kind of being taken away by a story. It's kind of like reading a good book, right? You enjoy it for its entertainment purposes and um, it stimulates your mind and your imagination and that's something that you find fun. And perfectly valid reason to go to the movies, right? To watch a movie or, or whatnot. That's one motivation. What about another motivation whereby... Uh, you know what? You want to hang out with your friends. You want to maybe you're going on a date. It's date night, and you're going on a date, and you go to the movies. Well, now all of a sudden, the reason why you're going to the movies isn't necessarily for the entertainment value of the plot and the story and all of that. Now, the benefit is just being with others, just having a shared experience with other people, that in and of itself is a benefit. Sometimes I go to movies, I don't really care about the movies, but people I'm with, I'd rather do something with the people I'm with and enjoy their company. And it doesn't really matter what the movie is. The fact that I'm with these people is satisfaction enough for me and it's what I want. So you can see in this example, if I was... Um, you know, trying to sell movie tickets, um, I would might want to find like a group of people who want to go for social reasons and position a product that's for them versus those who just simply want the entertainment value and position a product for them. Okay, and so these are two different motivations um, that, the, that reflect the benefits I wish to receive and to satisfy my needs and wants. Okay, so this one's a little bit more challenging to think about, but it's, again, very, very powerful because it describes motivation, like why somebody's doing an activity they're doing. Okay, the last one here, real quick, is this idea of behavioral segmentation. Behavioral segmentation um, deals with how people generally consume or go through the purchase process, um, kind of their habits, their processes for buying products, um, and interacting with our brand, more or less. Um, so how much, like for instance, look at customers who buy um, one product at a time or buy a whole bunch of product at a time. Some people who purchase or buy or shop at night, some people who buy during the day, some people who buy online versus people who buy offline, people who go to a purchase experience, um, like they go to the mall with their friends versus those who go by themselves. Um, these are all behaviors uh, that are associated with the buying process, and that's a way we can also... Um, we can also think about that. So, so again, consider this and can think about this idea of grouping consumers by these traits. Okay. Last thing we're going to talk about um, as we move forward is this idea that it may not be um, one criteria that you use to segment a market. So imagine this, that we have multiple segments or multiple criteria we don't just use geography, but we use geography and some demographics and some psychographics together to form a more complex kind of evaluation of a market segment. 
Um, this is so it's not that I want everybody who lives in a specific zip code, but I want everybody who lives in a specific zip code that meet a certain age criteria who are active outdoor enthusiasts. So there I use three different criteria to define this market segment. So as we go forward, don't limit yourself to thinking that these are exclusive dimensions that we have markets segmented by, but think of them as composites. And when we do that, we actually create what's called a customer profile that has a lot of different characteristics to it. So the image you see here um, is um, from, these are screenshots from a company called Esri. Um, this is a this is a for-profit, it's a company, Esri. They do a lot of uh, geo demography. So in other words, they take geographic like maps and they identify characteristics on the maps. And then you can apply those characteristics um, to a lot of marketing elements. So this is an example. This yellow highlighted area is a is a city space. Um, it's in Illinois. And um, the, down below, what you're going to see is this Esri's product called Tapestry. And um, in this bottom area, you see for this zip code, for this space, you see an income level, a population density, and a median age. You also see a description of the typical person who lives in that area. Um, and then, um, and, and, and you can kind of go from there. Now, this particular software or this, this, this program, um, they actually create different profiles of customers um, and people who live in, live in these areas. Um, so um, this profile the, that's here is called the in-style profile. And 27% of the people who live in this space are defined or characterized by what they call in style, working professionals, no kids, strong work ethics. They believe in the arts, travel, and reading. They focus on home maintenance and improvement. They use their phones to check for the best prices, and they use mobile coupons. Okay, so so that's kind of like a profile, but it includes behavior, uh, image, attitude, motivations. It includes a lot of these psychographic and behavioral criteria to describe this customer. And when we do um, segmentation, this is what we want to do. We want to get to the point where we're describing the customer and creating what's called a customer profile. Now, interestingly, you're going to see here, there's a little spot in this area. So this is all one city or town, but there's a spot here. And what's interesting about this particular spot is there's a university located at the spot. And in this university space area, the profile of the typical customer changes. And so now if you look down below, look at the income, population density, the, the, the age and such, you'll notice it's drastically different than the whole rest of that area. And this profile has been named or called dorms to diploma. They're busy students working part-time jobs, socializing, having fun with friends. They're active on computers, cell phones, internet. This is a little old MP3 players, uh, but they tend to shop impulsively, carry balances on credit cards. Cooking is limited to heating up frozen dinners and so forth. So that's the profile of the people who live in this space um, and they are college students. That's a different customer segment, right? And this software includes a lot of different variables that help, help explain that. So a little bit more about this particular profile. This is a great example of a profile that you could create after you do the um, segmenting process. You describe Consumers. Now you're going to see here again demographics, geographics, you're going to see psychographics, you're going to see some behavioral traits. All of those things come together to help us better understand um, who, who is in this who is in this market segment. Okay, so feel free to pause. 
the video on any of these screens to look at these a little more so you better understand this concept of a profile. Um, this, again, again, this um, company is called Esri, and this is a product that they offer called Tapestry. So dorms with diploma, we have a lot more. This is all demographic uh, data associated with this particular market segment. So those are things that we would look at. Um, again, you should be able to identify the criteria by their groupings. So these are these are um, these are these are demographic criteria. Um, we have different other indexes, market profiles. All of this information is stuff that you would want to know if you're trying to sell your product to a customer. Right? We noticed that this type of customer, you know, while we looked at just one specific location, um, we know that this particular customer you know, is all over the place, right? Um, you can find areas in Florida, for instance, where you see the University of Florida in Gainesville. Um, you see where Baton Rouge is in Louisiana. You see um, where all these different you know, we see Penn State up in Pennsylvania is, is located. Um, see, Illinois, University of Illinois is right in the middle of, of Illinois right there. Um, so you can see South Carolina, see where Columbia is, you see where Clemson is, see the, where the dots are bigger. There's a greater density of this particular type of type of student or, or this type of market. Okay, so summarizing here, there's things that we want to talk about, things you want to know. Remember, look at these progress checks as opportunities to review the material. These are good um, questions and, and things to look at for studying for your test. Okay, so identify the steps for segmenting, targeting, and positioning. Um, right, so we did the first step. Understand the potential objectives that we want to have for our um, process of what we're doing for the strategy we're developing. Um, understand these uh, five different areas and be able to recall different criteria that are demographic, psychographic, behavioral, geographic, and ones that would be the benefit of the customer. Okay, so review those. And then finally, understand this concept of a um, customer profile, a segment profile, and um, also this idea that we use multiple criteria to describe a group of consumers. It's not just one bit of criteria. It's lots of, lots of criteria that we use. Okay, uh, let me know if you have any questions. There's a lot in this video to digest. So um, take your time to learn what is there. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.